Today we're starting chapter 11. It's called stoichiometry. And although the word looks hard, the actual concept isn't. So if you understand a ratio, uh, this really won't be that hard. So stoichiometry is the study of the quantitative relationship. And if you remember, quantitative means a number. So we're still looking at math between reactants that are used and products that are produced. It's based on the law of conservation of mass. A cookie recipe will tell you the amount of ingredients you need to mix together to make a certain number of cookies. If you want to double the amount of cookies, you have to double the recipe. The ingredients are the reactants and the cookies are the products. In chemistry, a balanced equation is the recipe for determining how much reactant is needed or product will be produced for a specific reaction. So to interpret a chemical equation, we need to understand all those words that we talked about uh, before. An atom, a molecule, an ion, and a formula unit. So what information can be derived from this equation? Well, we can look at the particles. One molecule of nitrogen will react with three molecules of hydrogen to produce two molecules of ammonia. They are molecules because these are nonmetals covalently bonded. So the ratio of the molecules is one to three to two. If there were 10 molecules of nitrogen, this is the ratio thing. There would need to be 30 molecules of hydrogen to produce 20 molecules of ammonia. So all we're going to do in this chapter is manipulate the coefficient in front. If there were 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of N2, we just have to keep that ratio the same. There would be 3 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of H2, or 18.06. Either way is fine. And that would produce 2 times 6.02, or 12.04, times 10 to the 23rd molecules of ammonia. So it's a ratio thing. We just have to keep the ratio the same. Since 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules equals a mole, the balanced equation also represents the number of moles of reactants and products. So for every mole of N2, there would need to be 3 moles of H2 to produce 2 moles of NH3. This is the most important information that a balanced equation provides. But does the total number of moles of reactants equal the total number of moles of products? We see no. There are four moles of reactants and only two moles of products. So that leads us to our third important concept, mass. A balanced chemical equation must obey the law of conservation of mass. Mass is related to the number of atoms in the equation through moles. So one mole of N2, we should look it up, N is 14, so N2 will weigh 28 grams, reacts with three moles of H2, H weighs one, so H2 weighs two, so three moles weighs six, for a total of 34 grams 
of reactants. This will produce two moles of NH3. Well, N weighs 14, HH weighs 1, so that's a total of 17, times 2 is equal to 34 grams of products. Therefore, the moles, the coefficients in front don't have to be equal, but when converted to mass, you have to have the same mass on the reactant side as you have on the product side. So if we look at table one, here is another equation. Four moles of Fe react with three moles of oxygen to produce two moles of iron three oxide. But we could say there's four atoms reacting with three molecules. See how you have to know what these mean? To make two formula units. That has to make sense. Or we can say moles. And if we figure out four moles of iron and three moles of O2, we will get 319.4 grams of reactants, which will equal out 319.4 grams of products. So it's really not hard. And this is uh, what we're going to do in Chapter 11. That's it for today. Uh, have a great day, and we will see you in class.